with more cricket on the Sports Mag Zone. The urn of cricket's greatest rivalry, the Ashes, will return to Australia after the final two days of the fourth test at Old Trafford were rained out, forcing a draw. The result means that the Baggy Greens retained the trophy they won in 2021, the last time the series was contested. The England captain, Ben Stokes, expressed his obvious disappointment. Tough one to take, um, you know, being playing the cricket that we managed to play over the, the first three days and, um, you know, to, to get on the wrong side of the weather, it's, it's a tough one, but um, yeah, I guess it's all part of the journey. Uh, no, I, I think coming into this game, obviously knowing what we needed to do and the tasks that we had at hand um, sort of played into our hands a little bit. It was, again, another do or day, do or day. And, um, you know, obviously winning the toss bowling and bowling Australia out for 320, then, you know, scoring 570 at, at nearly six runs and over. I don't think we could have done too much. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those that will sort of just be tough to look back on. But, um, you know, we know we still got one more game in, in the series. And, you know, like 2019, we ended up, you know, tying the, tying the series and obviously Australia still returned the earn. But, you know, we've got a lot of pride to play for in the next game still. Meanwhile, the Australia captain, Pat Cummins, says his team will be heading to the Oval in search of an outright win. We tried a few different plans that didn't come, didn't, um, you know, come off this time. And, uh, yeah, it's tough. You know, you throw a few different things at them. It doesn't work. So, yeah, we'll look at that. We're at our best, um, probably with some planning and also particularly execution. So, um, yeah, we'll hopefully be better for next week. But they, they played fantastic on that second day. Yeah, that's it. That's what we've all turned up to be. Um, you know, trying to achieve. It's what we've spoken about. So, um, yeah, retaining is nice, but I'm trying to get the win. Yeah, so Fazir Mohammed still with us to talk about what happened at Old Trafford. Huge disappointment, Faz, for the English. They were um, in complete control and only the rain saved the artists. Yeah, and, and I think huge is the disappointment for, for all fans, whether you're an Australian fan or an English fan or just a neutral, because you don't want to see a contest which is bubbling up so nicely. Basically, the gas is turned off because of rain. And, and ran rain for, for, for most of the last two days because I, I think England, mindful of the weather, really chased down the game. And they chased down the game in a manner that, that left Australia looking shell-shocked. And we talked about that last week. They looked almost clueless as the runs were flowing on day two. And, and then when they picked up those four wickets near the end of day three, it really set things up beautiful. And, and, and again... It, because there's so much focus on this series known as the Ashes, and because it was bubbling up to a potentially historic situation of England coming back from 2-0 down to win 3-2 for only the second time in the entire history of Test cricket, it, it really is a big letdown for Reid to win it like this. Yeah, and Faz, what could the Aussies do? Because this, fourth, this fifth and final Test starts Thursday at uh, the Oval. Uh, that's just a couple of days from now. And um, based on the considerable momentum that England goes into this game with, they will be considered huge favourites to win the match and uh, tie the series at 2-2, even though they've lost the Ashes. But what, what could the Aussies do to, to stem them off? Because, um, you know, things look all England at the moment. It does. But in, in a way, Lance, this is almost the test match equivalent of a free hit. Because even if Australia lose... It's going to be too old and they return home with the Ashes anyway. So, given the fact that they've tried to counter England's style with their own style of being uh, really phlegmatic and being very determined and very deliberate in many ways, and it worked for the first couple of test matches, whether it worked because of their excellence or England's recklessness, is a discussion that is continuing because uh, Jeffrey Boycott, the former England opening back and writing in the Telegraph today, says that England lost the action because of their own hubris, being preoccupied with themselves and all of that and the, the cricket that they played in the first two test matches. And that discussion is going to continue. So why I consider it almost a free hit is that Australia can say, look, we're going to have to face up to these same people in a couple of years' time or a bit less. Let's try our own positive style of play at the Oval and see how it goes. Because uh, as I said, if you lose, it's a drawn series. If you win, it's 3-1. And either way, you've learned something about your own game as to whether or not you can match the English at their own style. 
Yeah, and fast speaking about the Oval, England, they would have to refresh their bowling attack because we know Chris Wokes is struggling with a quad problem and Stuart Broad, you know, he's played all five tests this summer. Who do you see coming in for, the, for them? Well, they've got a lot of resources. They've got Ollie Robinson who might be able to come back. Of course, there's going to be a lot of focus on Jimmy Anderson. Will this actually be his last test match? He doesn't sound as if he, he's giving up uh, international cricket anytime soon. And the, the, the good thing for, for, for England is they have a significant number of, of resources. Uh, Tom, who made his debut in the second test match, had looked quite impressive and it was a surprise that he was dropped after that. He's another one. So there are a lot of young players in and around the England team who are desperate to be given that opportunity. And, and this is what England are trying to create, an environment where everyone wants to be part of because you don't feel you're under pressure, you feel you can play your own game. If things don't work out, that you're not going to be crucified for it. And in an environment like that, you want to be part of that. So I don't see England struggling to get replacements for whoever might be injured, whoever might be nursing an injury. Oli Pope at the top of the order, the vice captain, uh, he's had some problems. He's missed the action. It didn't make a difference with the way England were going in this fourth test match. So I don't see those injury setbacks, walks or anyone else uh, as a major hindrance to England. Yeah, and just before you go, Faz, um, a quick comment on the massive crowds watching this Ashes series. Uh, we know there's been a lot of talk about dying test cricket globally, and I know that what we saw isn't representative of global test cricket because you have um, extensively discussed how unbalanced um, the, 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 the setup of test cricket is based on the, the tour structure and even the, the, the length of the test series. But it, it was... Massive, wasn't it, to see so many people watching Test cricket in England? It is. It is. Shades of 2005, that famous series where England finally reclaimed the Ashes after quite some time. But again, it's about the high plans. It's about the history. It's about the tradition. It's about playing at Lords and playing at Headingley. And again, we have moved away from that. But it's about feeding off that tradition and marking it, marketing it brilliantly. And there's always that tradition for cricket, a Lord's test, an Oval test, a Headingley test, and so on in England. So it, it becomes a social occasion as well. So, so when you add that and then you add the ashes and the way England are playing and the way they were coming back, it, they, they probably could build five more stadiums, play five more tests, and still they'll be packed out. Mm. All right, Faz, we're going to leave it there. Always a pleasure talking to you, brother. And um, uh, continue having your cup of tea in the afternoon. And we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Indeed. I look forward to my afternoon tea. <laughs>